Hey everybody, let's get our learn on. Have you ever thought about how a microscope works? Have you ever thought about how you can see this tiny microorganism? This, for example, is Bacillus cereus. Probably one micrometer by three or four micrometers in size. And we can see it really well with a light microscope. So you can even see, not only are you looking at a single microorganism, you can see its flagella, its tail. This is an example of an organism with paratrichous flagella. So they can all over their surface, and that's how they move. But that's beyond the scope of this video. But if you've ever really thought about how microscopes work, well, let's go ahead and take a look. All right, let's see, just erase that quick. So if we're going to look at tiny things, let's talk about size for a second. So microscopes or something that's microscopic is like the name implies, it can't be seen with the unaided eye. So we need help and that's what the microscope does. So just so you understand the units of measurements that we're looking at here, uh, primarily when you're looking at something through a, a light microscope, you're looking in the micrometer to high nanometer range. A micrometer is a millionth of a meter. A nanometer is a billionth of a meter. And then when you get down to electron microscopes, you, they actually have a resolution in the picometers, which would be a trillionth of a meter. So long story short, we're looking at very, very tiny things. So how do you actually see them? Well, this is the outside of a microscope. We've been through this in other videos, but let's take a peek inside at what's actually happening. So um, Art is not my strong suit, but uh, let's start here and then I'll, and I'll try to do a drawing for you. So here we have, this is actually a microscope that's kind of upside down. So you have the light, the light source that's actually the light rays are being bent uh, by the condenser and traveling through the specimen. But then here's the business side of a microscope where the objective lens and the ocular lens actually work together to magnify the image. So for example, if we're using a oil immersion microscope with a 100x objective and our ocular has a 10x objective, we're going to get a total magnification of 1,000 times. But how? Well, let's take a look. So here's an eye and this eye is going to be connected to a brain. So if you're just looking at something, let me just draw a stick figure here because that's about as good as it's going to get. Uh, if you're looking at this stick figure, then the image is going to be seen by your brain and you can tell that it's uh, relatively small and relatively close. But what happens if we change this and we have that same stick figure here, but between us and the image, we have the microscope lens. Well, what actually happens is the light rays are going to travel towards the lens and they're going to be bent. They're going to be refracted. So they're going to travel to your eye and hence to your brain um, at a different direction, a different angle. It's going to basically confuse your brain. Think about it. A microscope confuses your brain because here's what it actually does. Your brain thinks that this image is coming from here. So your brain thinks that this image is much larger. So that is really how microscopes work. So if you ever really thought about it, uh, that is the actual gist of it. So we have compound microscopes that are using multiple lenses, so which makes this even more effective. And we can clearly see things at 1000x with a light microscope. Um, some light mi microscopes that I've used can get to 2500x. And then of course, we'll talk in a moment about how electron microscopes and other microscopes can get even higher. We won't go into too much detail in this video with that, but I do want to talk about it a bit. So let's talk about resolution. So how? So who cares how high a magnification you can get if it doesn't look good, if it doesn't look clear? So resolution really is the key term when you look with microscopes because that's what determines the magnification. The resolution is the ability of the lens to distinguish between two points. So. Um, you know, I, I come from a clinical background. It makes me think of what's called two-point discrimination. When you're doing a neurological exam, a sensory exam on someone, you basically use a slide rule with two little points on it, and you bring it closer and closer and closer together until that person can only feel one stimulus, one point. So um, they actually get so close together that it's hard. Your brain can't tell them apart. Well, that's what happens with the resolution. So like I have here, a microscope with a resolving power of 0.4 nanometers can distinguish between any two points as long as they're 0.4 nanometers or farther apart. So if they get closer than 0.4 nanometers, instead of, in, instead of being two individual structures, let's say, you kind of see it as a, as a blurry mass. So they lose their clear defined edges and you no longer can get a good looking image. So really, the better the resolution, the higher the magnification. 
So why is it that you know a light microscope is fine, uh, visible light has a has a decent wavelength, but the shorter the wavelength of light, the better resolution, which hence means the better magnification. So beams of electrons have much shorter wavelengths than visible light, and that's why a transmission electron microscope can get to 100,000 x or more magnification. But I'll cover that in a completely separate video. So that's. Um, how the resolution determines the magnification that you can get with a microscope and that's also just the basics of how a microscope works. All right, this is just the image information and thank you and keep learning, keep growing gray matter and have a wonderful day.